The Haunted House by Peter E. Homan Chapter 1 The End of Term The school bell had just rung, and Robert hastily packed his bag. Term was finally finished, and the holidays had begun. Waiting by the gate stood Robert's little sister Annie. She was babbling away gleefully with some of her classmates, gesturing boldly with her hands, no doubt boasting about a large tree she had climbed, or fence she had traversed. Annie is two years younger than her older brother, but her size should not let anyone underestimate her. At a mere nine years old, she had already conquered a vast variety of climbable objects. Annie, let's go. I see mother coming, Robert urged as he placed his hand on his sister's shoulder. The sudden touch on his shoulder startled the girl, making her companions giggle and leaving Annie red-faced. Annie hated being laughed at, especially at school. She turned towards her brother and gave him a steely stare down, but Robert was unmoved, smiling away happily. So, how was the last day of school? asked mother as she pulled up next to the children. Annie exclaimed joyfully that school was dead to her, while Robert took a more reserved approach in proclaiming his happiness at the school term coming to an end. It was fine, he said, but we were not given any homework to do over the holidays. That's all right. I'm sure we can give you kids a few lessons to do in your spare time, mother playfully replied. Annie nearly fainted at the prospect of having to do homework while on holiday and considered kicking her brother in the shins over his betrayal. When are we leaving for the coast? asked Annie after having recuperated from the shock and clambered onto the back seat of mother's hatchback. It was a family tradition that they would spend the first school holiday of each year at the vacation home along the south coast, and Annie was already rearing to explore all that the ocean had to offer. The year before, she found an octopus, which sucked itself onto her arm. She chased Robert for nearly 20 minutes, threatening to attach the thing to his face, before it finally gave up and swam away. I'm afraid that something has come up, said mother despairingly, her eyes fixed on the traffic before them. Oh no, exclaimed Robert. He too was looking forward to the holidays and examining the sea life among the beach rocks and expanding his already impressive shell collection. As you know, your father has been very busy at work lately, mother began explaining. They were hoping to finish up this case before month end, but recent events have required your father to work on this all through the school holidays. The children's mood sank and Annie let out a wail of despair. She had already bragged to her school friends about how she was going to find the highest cliff along the coast and climb right to the top. What are we supposed to do then? asked Annie sulkily. Surely we cannot be expected to do homework all holiday long. The thought of being cooped up at home, having to listen to her brother lecturing her on matters that she cared nothing about, was as close to torture as she could imagine. She let out another wail, although this time it was more of a nagging grumble. Well, mother began, your father and I were talking, and we thought that there might be something else you kids could do over the holidays. She glanced at the sparkling eyes staring intently back at her in the rearview mirror. How would you like to visit the Darvels on Devil's Leap? Annie and Robert looked at each other and smiled. They fondly remembered their previous visit to Devil's Leap, where they, alongside their friends Anton and Ellie, saved the Darvel family farm from being bought out from under them by one of the large corporations who were monopolizing the local diamond trade. Yes, they exclaimed excitedly. When are we leaving? asked Annie, bouncing joyfully up and down. I bet this time I'll be able to outclimb Anton. I've been practicing. Look at how strong my arms have become, she continued holding her wiry right arm out in front of her brother's nose. Annie, mother exclaimed, exiling the little girl back to the corner of the back seat. Shenanigans aside, said Robert, glaring intimidatingly at his sibling, when are we leaving for the farm? I have been in contact with Mrs. Darvel, and she said that you kids are welcome at any time. Anton and Ellie are already back from boarding school, so we will be leaving first thing in the morning. Mother's words were met with howls of joy as the children began planning all they wished would happen during their visit. They were sure to have a grand old time. That night, at the dinner table, Annie and Robert could not contain their excitement. Robert was brushing up on the history of Devil's Leap, while Annie recounted all of the adventures they had during their last visit. Do you remember when I climbed down those ivies and snuck into the library? She asked excitedly. Now, said Mother, her one hand placed firmly on her hip and the other pointing straight at them. There will be no such naughtiness this time round. Your father and I will not be there to oversee what your kids are doing, so you will be on your best behaviour. Agreed? They nodded, 
knowing deep down that this was a promise they would surely struggle to keep, especially considering the freedom they had on the farm. What with Anton's truck being their ever trusty form of transportation, taking them from the house to their beloved pond, which, during the last visit, they had proclaimed as their clubhouse and safe haven. Honey, when are you leaving? asked Father as he strolled into the dining room from his office. He had been spending more and more time locked away in that dark, depressing room, speaking on the phone and working on his computer until the early hours of the morning. Annie seemed none the wiser to her father's dismay, but Robert had seen the effects of this case on his father's demeanour. Maybe it was a good thing that they were going away on their own, if only to give their father a little break from the bustling of children around the house. You'll be leaving first thing in the morning, love, replied Mother. Her support being the only thing keeping the poor man going, she was looking forward to giving him some time alone, albeit for her own sanity. Why don't you sit down and have some dinner? Robert could see the worry in his mother's eyes as she looked at the rapidly balding man in front of her. I can't tonight, replied father, as the telephone in his office rang for the umpteenth time that evening. Could you maybe bring some food to my office a little later? he asked, before closing the door to answer the call. Is daddy all right? Annie finally asked. It would seem as though she hadn't been all that blind to the goings on around the house. He'll be all right, replied mother, trying her best to disguise the worried twitch of her eye. It was nearly ten o'clock when mother finally tucked Annie into bed before checking in on Robert, who was still up reading. She urged him to get some sleep since they would be up early the next morning for their drive to the farm. As Robert laid his head down on the pillow, he could still hear father speaking on the telephone. It had been a tough couple of months, with father staying up until the early hours of the morning virtually every night. That evening was no different, aside from an unseasonable heat wave which had been plaguing the city for a few days. Father had opened the window in the office to let in fresh air, which allowed Robert to hear what he was discussing. From what Robert could gather, the police had arrested three suspects involved in diamond smuggling. However, father and his team were struggling to convict those involved. It would seem as though the arrests had not halted the illegal trade, and that the trail of those orchestrating these dastardly activities was running cold. Father, being a state prosecutor, had come to see this case as his big chance to prove himself, and the pressure to ensure these convictions had become a heavy burden to bear. If only Robert could, in his limited capacity, help his father in this regard. Alas, all he could do was offer emotional support on those rare instances where father granted himself some free time. This thought consumed Robert leading to a rather unpleasant night of tossing and turning before finally drifted off to sleep. It was close to five o'clock when Mother woke Robert and Annie, announcing that they were to take on the long road to Devil's Sleep. Mother had prepared a banquet of provisions for their trip, including egg sandwiches, which Robert and Annie both hated, but Father loved, and crispy buffalo wings, the latter of which was normally gobbled up before they even left the smoggy air of the city behind, although Annie could never quite figure out where exactly on the buffalo these supposed wings came from. After all, she had never seen one fly, which did make sense, considering the tininess of these wings and the enormity of a buffalo. Father had evidently not slept a wink and was still pacing up and down in his office, fueled on by coffee and pipe tobacco. He gave them a rather half-hearted hug each and off they went, the potential adventures laying ahead brightening up what would otherwise have been a rather gloomy encounter.